All right, what's up, y'all? Take a fan here. As y'all can see by the title of today's video, we're here to talk about the easiest shooting badge method in NBA 2K22 Next Gen. So I hope y'all enjoy. If you do, for to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties, all that good stuff. And like always, strikes one to 1,000 likes. Now, for all the subs to the channel, you guys are like, yo, Laker fans making a shooting badge tutorial? What's going on here? But I gotta say, on these five nines, it's super cake to get these shooting badges. You can get open so easily. And honestly, I believe this is the case for a lot of builds. I've tried this with only having like 93 pointer, and I only have silver quick first step at most in all the clips that I have right here. Some of them were with bronze, some of them with nothing. And then honestly, if you have other things like Space Crater, even if you're a taller build, this would be very doable for you. So, like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed. And we're here to showcase all types of methods with this. We got two different ways. One's going to be with timing your shots. The other is with no timing at all. You're going with real player percentage, and it's very doable. And I'm here to tell you guys the best methods for all the badges you can get. In total, in this game right here, I have about 20 different shooting badge points. I'll talk about the budgeting on them and all types of stuff like that you want to put on early versus late, all types of stuff like that. I would say Circus 3 is going to be really important and Corner Specialist as well. We're here to talk about this method. I'll get into the really type of breakdowns and stuff like that, talking about how I set the screen up toward the corner every time, what hop jumper you need for all this stuff, all that. Matter of fact, we're just going to show that right now. So we got Harrison Barnes hop jumper. This is going to be the 100% most pivotal thing for this badge method right here. It's super good at getting you open and creating space. And then we'll show the custom jump shot as well. But either way, I just want to show you guys what we're working with right here. Steph Curry dribble pull up. For the custom jump shot, we got base three, the absolute fastest and just best jump shot in the game and then we got upper release for the kobe bryant we do not have any blend on the 24 i just got it as paying homage to kobe <laughs> so that's simple as that all right so to showcase the stats that i had in that exact game right there against the thunder i was a total of 42 of 56 from three in that game i did have my shot timing on and i was on pro now we'll talk about other things as well and i'm gonna pop this on the screen right here where as you can see at the top of the screen right there with the modifiers for playing on hall of fame difficulty you get a 1.55 times multiplier for your actual my points and badge progress and all types of stuff like that and then for opponent strength for playing a really good team you also get a 1.5 times multiplier so if you have both those two things combined you can get a times two we did this on a video earlier we were talking about how to get the double my points double badge points all types of stuff like that so we're not going to go over that and explain it all over again if you want to check that out and see a couple specific teams that you could go for in terms of what's going to help you get those double badge points or if you want to play on pro this is what i'm going to suggest just in terms of this video I really would suggest to play on pro difficulty and play against other good teams. So teams like the Nets, all types of really good teams off the top of your head and ones that aren't going to give you too much of a problem in terms of really hard defensive matchups that are going to be matched up on you. And a really good example of this is going to be the Nets. So in this game, I won 175 to 146, 92 points. Now you're wondering, why am I showcasing this? It's not exactly the best game. You can see I only went 24 of 33 from three-pointer. On the moving threes, I had six for six on standstill threes. But you're probably wondering, why am I showcasing this? Well, I was playing on pro. I had the opponent strength for playing the Nets of 1.5 times multiplier. And then on top of that, you can see I have this titled NA versus Nets. I'm just going to go ahead and show you one shot. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go possession for possession from the beginning of the first quarter as soon as I get subbed in and show you guys what I'm doing and the struggles behind it and how to get around the struggles. So this is going to be the first and foremost, very most important thing. And this is going to be how to control the side where the screener is going to. So you can see the flat side of the screen is on the right right here. So wherever this flat side that I'm pointing to on the screen is going to be, is going to be where the screener sets it to. So for instance, he's going to go to my right right now, but then I push in the left stick and it flips it over to the left. So he's going to set the screen to my left now. And I want to go to the corner every single time. So that left, that left stick right there is going to be really important for you controlling the screener and where you want to put him. And in situations where nobody is in that corner yet either, it's super efficient and super effective. And you're going to see boom, just like that. You get the step back threes easy. Now, here's why I say this is the easiest shooting badge method of them all. No shot feedback is going to pop up right there. And it's because I have the NA shot feedback on. I have real player percentage on my player and I don't have to actually pay attention to anything. Every shot is going to go in as long as it's wide open. And the key is to figure out how to get yourself wide open. So right there, I accidentally call for a regular play. You can see early on right there, the screen is going to be set up to the wrong side. I'm going to go ahead and flip it right away. And it's hard to see, so I'm just going to pause it on the earliest frame. You can see it's set up to the left right here. Once again, I was talking about the flat side. It's on the left. I don't want to go this way. There's already a wing in the corner here. And I want to go to the side where there's just the corner because ideally I would just set up a play that opens up that corner and then call for the screen. But I don't want to go through all that BS. It's too much thinking. It's too much work for you to go through. I'm just here to show you the very easy method of getting this to work almost every single time so right there is going to be the one bad take that i have 
we're gonna just like I said show you the good bad ugly all types of stuff like that but right here this is gonna be a nice method for you as well if you have a decent steel rating on your build I'm gonna suggest 100% to call full court press you're gonna see they come out here and they're just coming all the way down in the press right there you're gonna be able to just send double teams by holding LB as well and you're gonna have double teams coming to the person that you're matched up on just like that you're gonna be getting some good steals and you're gonna get really easy three pointers as well I do also have extender on for my perk and you can run accelerator I would say both of them are pretty efficient but right there you can see again chances at turnovers you get really fa fast stuff to happen as well where it's just bad takes boom i'm out on the break i'm gonna run out to the three-point line and hold down on my right stick <laughs> again not gonna be a good take so i'm just gonna set it up and reset we're gonna go ahead and call for the screen again set him up to the right side boom i'm going now i'm also gonna wait for this corner guy to be situated i know this is really moving kind of slow for the early transitions of like you know me showing you guys how i'm doing all this stuff but i promise you it's going to be so much worth your time for me to explain this rather than to just be showing you me hitting every shot that I take. I want to explain to you, you really want this corner guy to be situated and sitting still so that this guy isn't like overreacting. You can see he actually takes a step in the, like the wrong area. And this happens a lot when you do have the corner situated and sitting still. So once again, boom, step back three. This is going to be Harrison Barnes hop jumper. I 100%. 100% recommend you to go with the Harrison Barnes hop jumper. It is so fire. It gives you so much space. And if you have anything like Space Creator as well as Quick First Step, all that stuff is going to be really good for you. Again, right here, you can see this is where I screw up one more time again. And I'm just going through all the struggles that you're going to face while doing this method as well. Where I'm trying to just, you know, get a quick little shot off right there. I already know I'm going to miss this. He's super close to me. Bruce Brown's a pretty solid defender as well. So I just hit the bailout pass, press A button, wherever it goes, it's whatever. A turnover doesn't hurt my badge progress by any means. However, missing shots and being inefficient with this makes my badge count go down even more more because shooting badges are based on efficiency and you need to be able to actually hit a lot of the shots that you're taking so you want to be able to get a lot of open shots so once again boom kelly wins the jump ball we're coming out here setting the screen back to the right i'm going off it boom step back easy this is such an easy repetitive method you can see once you get those shot creator takeovers too we'll just go ahead and fast forward a little bit through the process of it but you can see once you get the shot creator takeovers rolling, then it's just going to be even more cake. You can get the team takeover. And with extender, this is going to go ridiculous. <laughs> I'm talking like you have literally three or four minutes of you just being able to do fadeaways the whole time. So pretty much for the whole rest of the first quarter, I'm going to be able to just literally do it every single time that I want to. Ankle breaking shots going to be super cheese for this too. It helps you hit step back three pointers, as well as the fact that you can do stuff like this making dudes just completely fall and stumble you don't need to set up all the screen stuff when you have the takeovers on like this because ankle breaking shots is going to do all the work for you so literally all you have to do is run at people and once again i'm not even timing my jump shots it's literally something that i'm just holding down on the stick all the way I, i'm literally shooting it like it's a, like it's a very late and i'm just holding the stick down the entire time I don't really have to pay attention. I can just sit here and watch like YouTube or Netflix, whatever the case may be. I don't really watch Netflix, but you get the deal. TV shows, whatever the case may be. Long story short, you're coming out here hitting three pointers super easy and no attention needs to be paid at all. And again, extender lasts super long just to show you how long this is going to last too. We're going to go all the way to the end of the quarter. And just like that, we're still like with a whole takeover bar remaining. <laughs> and that was four minutes worth of takeover just like that. Now, between the quarter breaks, you are going to lose a little bit of it. You're going to see once again, just easy, quick setup where I got James Harden on me. Boom. I'm just hitting the step back. He gets stunned. I'm also like the three point rating is through the roof when the shot creator takeover is on with the team take. And just like that, your ability to hit those fadeaways and like step back threes is ridiculous. Now, one thing that you do want to watch is the fouls if you're someone who's a little bit taller like say you're like a six foot five or a six foot six or something even taller than that obviously the way i'm going to recommend you to play defense is pretty much just going to be if you're matched up on an inside big man if you're say kelly olenic right here just sit in the sit on the baseline sit near the stanchion of the hoop and literally just bait this guy to come into the paint reset and come out the paint every like two or three seconds just so you don't don't keep getting called for defense of three seconds but you get the deal pretty much just move baseline to baseline on the baseline itself and just wait until they actually pass the big man boom go for the blocks go for rebounds off that it's cake it's super easy to play defensive badges as a big man and as a guard it's way harder but either way for the guards everything you're seeing in this video is pretty much how i'd recommend to go for it but i am in foul trouble and i don't want to foul out i more so for the sake of me showing the video i also would recommend that you guys maybe play on a shorter quarter length we will talk about that a little bit right there you can see create nice separation but I will say the best way to go for these shots is going to be not actually trying to create separation. You're just going to like literally like see how I kind of run past Harden right there and he's on my hip. 
rather than actually in front of me. What I would want is for him to be right there as I'm performing this move so that he gets hit with the ankle breaking shot rather than I'm creating space on this. You can see he still recovers and gets a good shot contest. If I break his ankles off that, he's not, he's not able to contest it. He's literally on the ground right now. So on top of that, like I was saying, I don't have space creator on Hall of Fame like I could. I don't have quick first step on Hall of Fame like I could. I understand a lot of you guys when you're going for your shooting badges like this, you're probably gonna go for shooting badges first and then playmaking second. I will say though, if you wanted to, you really could do playmaking first and then go for shooting second. But I understand in college, it's not very easy to do. You have a lot of those situations where you don't have people who can catch lobs very good and really your teammates are just trash. So honestly, for college, I would just say to go for shooting entirely. And then once you get to the NBA, you could probably go more so for the playmaking when you actually get on a decent team like this. But again, you can see, it's literally the most foolproof thing. I'm not timing my jump shot at all. I'm just holding down on the stick. Harrison Barnes hop jumper. Boom. Harden gets his ankles broke. Wide open corner three. I got corner specialist. Circus threes on. All types of stuff like that. Here we are just skipping to the third quarter. And I'm just showing you a couple different clips. Now, what I want to talk about. And this is why I'm recommending you guys to play on a shorter quarter length. I'm just doing this for the sake of the video. And show you a nice little my point spread. Or decent badge count and stuff like that. But for you, I'm going to recommend that you guys play on a shorter quarter length. And this is why. Watch the takeover meters here. So, once you've already popped takeover once or twice in the course of a game, especially team, you're going to see in the third quarter how much this goes up by. It's horrendous. I mean, it literally goes up by a sliver right there. And we'll just go ahead and fast forward to the next shot that we make. And you're going to see the progress on this one right here as well. It's horrible. It's really not worth you playing the whole entirety of this game for. If you ask me, boom, we set it up really quick off that. That was actually a really seamless like transition in terms of secondary fast break. I'm calling for the ball right here. Boom. We flip Olenek on the screen right away. I flip him over to the wrong side of it. Boom. Hit the step back on Blake Griffin. It's really a very easy process once you get it down. And once again, it requires no timing. I can't stress that enough how easy this is for you to not pay attention. And obviously when shooting the ball, you do have to pay attention. But when it's on the real player percentage, it really doesn't matter at all. And I'm still capable of shooting 77% from three, albeit it is on pro. But if you can play good matchups and play hard teams yet still play on pro, that's where you're really going to see the benefit of this. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of minutes either. So I was sat for like the whole first half of the first quarter and then I got sat for the whole fourth quarter. So I don't really have the ability yet to show you guys that I was getting OD badge progress off these games. But for the efficiency of it, for how long I was playing these games, it really did not take too long. And you can see, once again, the progress is pretty good on this. It's 21,000 shooting badge points. I'll go ahead and just let you guys see it like actually pop up on the screen. But you do the math on this. This is 20,000 plus the 680. Boom. It's going to be 21K. But either way, I'll go ahead and let you guys see the actual badge progress pop up on the screen right here so we got 92 points 77 percent from three once again not timing my shots at all <laughs> and it also is really good for the defensive badge progress too so i'm gonna get poke balls and steals so for every poke ball loose that you have you get your individual like stat performance as well and then you also have steals so pretty much every steal you get is gonna amount to both of those being combined and then you also have the teammate grade performance and stuff like that helping to my points Pretty much what I'm telling you guys is playing opponent strength teams, ones that are really good in the league or really good in your my career is the cheese. And having that 1.25 times multiplier or 1.5 times multiplier is so nice. Look at that, 21,000 shooting badge points just like that. So now let's backtrack a little bit right here. So we're coming back to the badge counts. Pretty much, I'm at 18 right here, but you don't exactly need mismatch expert in Deadeye. I will say they definitely help for the sake of making the occasional BS take where you're not setting the screen up perfectly or you're not hitting the step back perfectly off takeover. But I will 100% suggest that circus threes and corner specialist are the two that you really, really want to start with. And you're gonna have to execute pretty well on those screens. Like I was saying, you can use the left stick to flip them to the corner side. Again, I was mentioning, and because the video was moving a little bit slow, I wanted to at least explain to you guys that that corner needs to be situated in the corner. You want him to be standing still. You don't want him to be running over to his spot while you're setting the play up. You want him to be standing still, then boom, set up the pick and roll to that corner. You can be wide open, easy, and just have some patience with it is all I'm saying. And after Circus 3's and Corner Specialist, I would say Hot Zone Hunter and Volume Shooter are probably the next two best to have. And then things like Deadeye and Mismatch Expert could come afterwards. You're gonna see right here, this is where I'm gonna talk about badge budgeting, where 
you're gonna have hot zone hunter costing two extra badges to put on so obviously i would put mismatch expert on that only cost me one to put it on silver whereas things like volume shooter i have on gold because it only cost me three to have three different badge points into this and then to have it on hall of fame would cost an extra two so it would cost me five in total so long story short you can see the reason that i'm keeping all those there it makes a lot of sense to have the right badge budgeting when it comes to all that corner specialist would also cost me an extra two points to put in the hall of fame so pretty much every badge point that i have on all of this stuff only cost me one extra to keep on upgrading each tier the only one that cost me extra that i have at hall of fame is going to be circus threes and that's because it's super relevant in terms of what i'm doing for actually getting my shots off and again the reason i'm doing the step back threes is because it requires no focus no attention paid at all whereas if you're setting up regular screens you got to actually set the screen up properly like perfectly every single time sometimes you guys know the deal too you got to actually like rescreen like three or four times just to get an open shot and the standstill threes are super annoying if you ask me i don't think it's worth my i don't think it's worth your time i don't think it's worth your energy and effort and actually focus that you have to put into the game whereas this right here is so straightforward and easy i mean it really requires no attention paid at all almost just to clarify too these are the only defensive badges i have on in this video and really all i even use in terms of actually trying to get my defensive like badges for steals and stuff with this build it's way too small to actually play any like interior defense or anything like that again if you're someone who's a little bit taller this is cake for you you're gonna be able to get really easy defensive badge points and i understand this is not actually the easiest badge method for people that are like taller than probably six foot seven six foot six you do need a little bit of ball handle for this so i do understand i do apologize to people who clicked on this video <laughs> if you have a build that's actually like super tall i have a 7.3 that i'm working on right now and i would say the best method that i've had for getting my shooting badges on that is to either do pick and pops when i have team takeover and it's super cake and then also i sometimes do the post fades if you have a good mid-range now this is another thing that we'll talk about too you don't have to do this i really think it's kind of a waste of your vc but for me personally i just figured if i'm playing like 12 minute quarter games and i'm trying to be the most efficient with my time as you can clearly see i don't really care how much money i spend in the game that's because i'm a youtuber however obviously so <laughs> honestly it's up to you guys how you want to spend your vc but really a thousand vc into this for one my career game it's kind of whatever in my opinion so next once again i'm just showcasing i was on pro and 12 minute quarters and then also i just want to bring this back one time as well we're going to showcase that i am on real player percentage so what you're going to do to do this you're going to go into your settings real quick you can see i almost forgot to showcase it before i hopped in this game right here but you're going to go to options slash quit you're going to go to controller settings and then boom right here for the shot timing you're going to put it on real player percentage if you want as well in the actual settings tab what you can do is turn off all the cutscenes and stuff like that so the game just goes a lot more fluently and you know a lot more seamless it's going to be in this like category right here under the settings i don't actually go down all the way to show it but either way controller setting boom real player percentage and then just like that, you don't even have to pay attention. All you have to do is set up the screen properly, get open, hold the stick down, call it a day. If you want to go for defensive badges, go for it. If you don't even want to pay attention on defense, it is what it is. But I will say, getting into steals and stuff like that will set up a lot of easy three-pointers for you. Or maybe even sometimes if you're not paying attention, you won't realize your team has the ball. And it's going to be a little inconvenient for you because you could have a lot of fast break three-pointers. that are going to set up really easy takes and really easy takeover progress for you as well. And one other thing worth mentioning too, like I was saying, is... In your schedule you're going to want to dodge really bad teams so i mentioned this in the other video you want to avoid teams like probably the pacers and stuff like that who are not even in the playoff picture right here as you can see and teams like the celtics knicks sixers nets bucks bulls hawks if you see something in the playoff picture chances are that it's probably a good team and chances are as well that 2k actually bases opponent strength based on like you know where they are in the playoff standings as well so long story short i'm just telling you guys that i think it's well worth it for you to be playing better teams and actually getting the opponent strength rather than playing on hall of fame and playing any random team now also what's really unfortunate about this is you are going to be stuck into some of these games where for instance i didn't want to play okc i knew i wasn't getting any opponent strength for them and it was just gonna be a waste of time but the storyline forces you to play some games and I try and sim past any bad teams I, that, I, that I can, honestly, but some of them you just can't avoid. So it is what it is. You could just play on pro five minute quarters for games that are obviously going to be no opponent strength for you. That's how I would go about it personally. So real quick, let's talk about playing an opponent that's going to be giving you the 1.5 times multiplier as well as playing on a Hall of Fame. I don't think it's worth your time as well as the fact that we're going to talk about like matchups of what type of teams you're playing against too. So for instance, with the Bucks, we got Drew Holiday over here. He's an absolute lockdown, <laughs> a perimeter lockdown. Like he's 
he's got probably like 90 almost 99 perimeter defense and really high steel and really good defensive badges i still do this anyway though i just want to explain to you guys though that like this is a really tough matchup like i'm playing against a great backside hedge defender with Giannis and a great on ball defender with drew holiday as well you're gonna see in random situations like this too i even got Giannis on me like <laughs> it's in transition and that's not very cool if you ask me i could have split right through there and brooke lopez would have been the guy that was guarding me what i also want to mention to you guys before we end this video is you want to be able to be kind of selective with who you're picking in terms of this backside defender so if i were to call for the screen from y right here i'm gonna have Giannis switching on to me and he's gonna be the one contesting me whereas if i call for the screen from lt it's gonna have brooke lopez coming up and being the one contesting me now right here i go for the screen right here but i don't even realize that this is still a pretty solid defender right here as well so <laughs> it wasn't exactly worth my time but either way i did get the step back to work but unfortunately Giannis and his just intimidator and all types of stuff like that and just him being super tall and lanky equals him contesting this as well but you can see either way this is still an open shot i would suggest when you have this shot takeover that just go crazy make it worth your time to just get shots up early but once again too this is on hall of fame and this is why i do suggest maybe just play on pro because honestly it's not really worth the time if you ask me you're gonna see that the efficiency was kind of the same i do get the ankle breaker on drew right there and it goes in but either way we'll just go ahead and skip to the end of this game and show you the progress that i was getting for this and you can see from the three-point attempts right here, I was not being very efficient with moving three-pointers. I mean, it was horrible. I think I lost my takeover as well. I was trying to save for team, and then Drew plucked me, and it was just over from there. But anyway, what I'm just kind of getting at with you guys right here is you can see the efficiency was horrible, but the badge progress was still good. It was still around 21K like it was in the other game where I was playing on pro versus the Nets. So it kind of is what it is. And once again, we're just going to kind of run this back right here and show you the Hall of Fame difficulty is also stacking on top of the opponent's strength. So... I mean, again, even if you are struggling with this, where you're only shooting 14 of 34, that's really bad. That's still giving me 11,000 shooting points. That's a lot. To have the standstill three-pointers, these are mostly on fast break, mind you. And on the fast break, once again, I'm on the NA shot timing. I'm on the real player percentage. And I'm still able to shoot 9 for 12 on pretty much probably all open threes. And that right there is just a walk in the park. I mean, I'm getting 9,000 points for literally just taking open fast break threes off of steals, off of people missing, and I'm just leaking out on the break. My build only has 72 speed, mind you, too. <laughs> I haven't even upgraded speed yet. So you guys can 100% be doing this as well, where you're leaking out on the break and just guarding the point guards and stuff like that. But anyway, I mean, you can see how crazy this boost is <laughs> off the fact that I'm getting 2.5k on finishing for just four layups. Like, that's insane. And then alley-oop assists and stuff like that, too. As you guys were able to see, I was kind of struggling to shoot the ball. So what I was going to end up doing in some situations when I didn't have takeover on and I didn't want to ruin my shooting percentage even more than it already was, I was just going with the typical takes to the, you know, the pick and roll alley-oops. Simple. It's really easy to do. You guys know the deal. You just set up the screen the exact same way that you're going for the shots in the corner. But instead, if the big man is open on the rolls, you can just throw him the lob. Just like that, you'll get the alley-oop assist, attack assist, and pick and roll assist all in one motion just like that. And then boom, you're getting like over 2,000 playmaking points for just one alley-oop every single time. And again, steals, poke ball looses, all types of stuff like that, well-defended plays for shot contests. It all adds up, and playing on Hall of Fame is really cheese. So if, you, if you're not about pride and you actually want to maybe pay attention and have a little bit of focus and a little bit more fun, I guess, while playing my career, if you like the challenge, it kind of is what it is. But some people obviously want to be most efficient with this. And really, when it comes down to that too, the efficiency is kind of still up in the air. Like I said, I got 21,000 shooting badge points for both games, playing on Pro versus the Nets and playing on Hall of Fame versus the Bucks. And I shot horrible against the Bucks. If you play on Hall of Fame versus the Nets too, you could probably even go crazy as well. So anyway, that's all for video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, for to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on the noties. Uh, good stuff. Like I said, intro, let's try this one to 1,000 likes. If you made it to this point in the video, put shooting in the comments to show your support's been all the way through, or put shot. <laughs> I don't know if YouTube's going to like the shooting comments in the in the comment box, but anyway, put shot in the comments to show your support's been all the way through. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed. Feel free to check out the video talking about that two times multiplier as well. It kind of had the same exact information that I was talking about in this video, but Either way, you'll also be able to maybe get inside my mind on a couple teams that are going to be really good to play against and also really bad to play against. And we even did a, a video on the 150K My Points method about a month ago. And it was pretty much just me going all in on defense, playmaking, and finishing and wasn't even shooting at all. So if you get done with your shooting badges and you want to come back to that right there, Laker fan 150K My Points. Simple. Search. Easy. Just like that. You'll be able to find it. So anyway, that's all for the video. Hope you all enjoyed. Nanette, take it easy, man. Peace.